Check, check, hey, hey, check, check.
Okay, good evening, everyone. Calling to order meeting of the special board meeting of the Santa Clara Unified School District Board of Trustees for Wednesday, June 29th, 2022. I'll start with a roll call. Trustee Canova? Here. Trustee Fairchild? Here. Trustee Gonzalez? Uh, is absent. Trustee Lieberman? Here. Trustee Ratterman? is absent. Trustee Ryan is absent and I am here. All right, next is the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Trustee Lieberman, would you mind? Sure. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda is our district mission, mission and vision statements. So our mission, which is now beautifully on our wall. Uh, uh, yeah, it's missing a letter, we all know. <laughs> the mission of Santa Clara Unified School District is to provide equitable, engaging and innovative educational experiences so that each student thrives in a global society. And our vision is that graduates of Santa Clara Unified School District are resilient, future ready, lifelong learners who think critically, solve problems collaboratively, and are prepared to thrive in a global society. Next on the agenda, item five is a review and acceptance of our agenda. Motion to approve. You could, Second. You could sit down first, Trustee Redman. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. so, no, I already had a second. Yeah. So uh, Trustee Ratterman had the first and Trustee Fairchild has the second. Uh, any comments or changes, discussion? No, okay, then um, we have nobody online so we can vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. any opposed? Okay, that passes. Uh, now we are at five to zero. Okay. Next item is B.1, the 2022-2023 consultant agreement renewal with Crescendo Education Group for Equitable Grading, Professional Learning and Coaching. And I believe we have uh, Mr. Stam on Zoom to answer any questions. Yes, good evening trustees, can you hear me? We can, mm -hmm. do we have uh, a picture of Mr. Stam? Has he got his video? You can see him? I don't see him. That's fine. That's fine, okay. so. Um, Mr. Stamet, do you have a presentation or, or should, should I just open it up for questions? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say I do have uh, Mr. Joe Feldman here. He's under the moniker CAIO division. Um, he added some additional detail to the proposal, um, which hopefully was helpful. And um, he's more than happy to answer any of the trustees questions about either the scope or the um, compensation, uh, whatever, whatever you wish. Okay, so I'll open it up for questions. Uh, Trustee Fairchild. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mr. Stamp for um, getting us the additional information. And as I have thought about um, this contract, what hit me is um, how I wished we approached our consultants the way we approach our um, construction. And that we we decide what we want, we go and look, and then usually we come back with the best best bid. Um, and as I was, I've been thinking about it since this last board meeting. Um, I was actually at a swim meet with my daughter, and um, my uh, uh, an employee in the our district came and said, "I know we're at a swim meet, but." How come you're uh, not using the county training program? And I 
I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, you do know that our county has training. And yes, I did. I went to a lot of trainings through our county when I was an employee in this district. And she goes, and they actually have an equitable grading component um, course this summer. You can get college credits and it's free. And um, I, I was a little um, flabbergasted that we weren't using um, this free opportunity from our county. And I think when I was talking to her, as I since reflected, um, one of the things is we don't have to go to the highest consultant, highest paid consultant to get training. When we have good training available to us here in our county. And I realize that in our district, we have gotten used to spending a lot of money. And I've asked over and over again for us to dial it back and to really look at how we're spending taxpayer dollars, my dollars, everyone's dollars. And to be thoughtful about that, we don't have to go and always choose the highest bidder. We can get really good services from so many people, so much talent in our county. $120,000 versus free is a big difference. And yet this opportunity, as far as I'm aware, wasn't even advertised to our staff. I believe we need to do equitable grading. I don't think we have to pay the highest amount. Okay, um, Mr. Sam, I don't know if you know about this program, if you have any comments. Um, I see it's an asynchronous self-paced online class for educators. Are you familiar with it, Mr. Stan? No, but I definitely will work with Ms. Knavel to make myself familiar with it. I think as we think about a change management strategy that really is asking teachers to change their instructional paradigm, I think it's important that we start with in-person learning that's cohort-based so that teachers can rely on each other to take the kind of instructional and assessment risks that they need to be a vanguard. And then I think as we're talking about scaling the practice across the district, making the opportunity for asynchronous self-paced makes a lot of sense. I think it's really thinking about what's the professional learning strategy at the right point in time over the course of the change trajectory. Uh, and I think having a nationally recognized expert um, to build confidence within the ranks of our administrators and our teachers, that they're doing something that is soundly based in research uh, and will yield positive results for all of our students, particularly those historically least well served, um, is an appropriate strategy. And I think the return on investment in terms of improved GPA for our students and improved confidence in the soundness of assessment practices by our teachers will improve retention, uh, and we'll improve on time graduation for our students. And that's the bet that I guess we're making with this money. Um, it's, it's the equivalent of one FTE, I would agree. Um, but when we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of students and their life trajectories, I do think it's worth the investment. Okay, thank you, uh, Trustee uh, Lieberman and then Trustee Ratterman. Thank you, President Rehead. Um, Thank you, Mr. Stam for, um, being available today. Um, I, I am very much in support of, of equitable grading. I, I've, I've experienced the, the negatives of not having that with my own kids. So I'm very um, interested in seeing this happen in the district. I do, however, share Trustee Fairchild's concerns about cost. So my question is, um, is the point of having um, this training happen in cohorts, is the is the end result going to be that this becomes part of PLC, so that um, we're not paying in perpetuity to have this consultant train every teacher? Um, are we just trying to kind of ramp up our own internal um, staff and then have have that kind of trickle down in at at the site level? Absolutely. Thank you, Trustee Lieberman, for raising that. This is very much a capacity building strategy and a leadership development strategy. So we have one cohort 
last year and we'll have a second cohort this year. Uh, and the idea is to create a critical leadership mass where they will be educating their peers. And then we won't need um, Mr. Feldman anymore because we'll, we will have built that expertise within the system. And in fact, that really is the intention around this type of a consultant is to build our own internal knowledge base and our own internal capacity around that. And um, Joe, if you'd like to weigh in and, and talk a little bit more about your strategy and how you've worked with other districts in this way, you know, I'd invite you to do that at this point. Sure. Well, I would just um, say that what we want to do is, uh, as Jim said, is to build a capacity internal to the district. And it's not just site leaders and it's not just um, cores of teachers, but it's also board members to be able to articulate how more equitable grading serves. for our historically underserved students um, and we don't i mean we want to do it so we don't need to be there i mean that we're trying to work ourselves out of a job thank you um mr stam um how many do you feel that this is the the last year that this contract would be renewed or do you foresee um a year after this, when, when do you think we will be at a point where we've reached that critical mass to start um, PLCs? Well, I think we can, like I've told the board in the past, I think it's a typically a three-year arc, um, but the third year is significantly diminished. And it'll also be around engaging the board around policy and the policy implications of that. Um, I know that they worked with, um, Plaster Joint Union uh, on a three-year contract as well, which resulted in the board approving an equitable grading policy. So we can plan with the board around, you know, what that might look like in the third year. I'm I'm open and agnostic. I'm not wedded to a third year um, with Mr. Feldman. Uh, I what I want to see is that we're able to really build sufficient critical mass so that we can sustain the momentum. Because it, this is a tricky and complex um, professional learning endeavor. We're asking teachers to re-examine practices that they have been wedded to, in some cases, for perhaps three decades, uh, and to sort of disconnect themselves from what they have considered to be very legitimate practices and take a critical look at their own uh, grading. And so it needs to be done with thoughtfulness and sophistication um, and empathy and care. And so we need that expertise that comes from working with dozens of districts around the nation for this year. But we can definitely plan in mind that we have a, a short tail um, to this partnership. Okay, thank you. Trustee Ratterman and then Trustee Canova. Yeah, so I find myself at a little bit of, um, I actually feel pretty ignorant to be honest with you. We had a session, one session with Mr. Feldman. It was a very good session, but we never got to the meet. We got to the survey. This is kind of great. You ought to do this. It's a wonderful thing to do, but we never got into the details. I read the entire book, okay? And there were parts of this book that, uh, parts of this that excited me. I mean, there was some stuff in here that was really good. Um, a lot of it is similar to standards-based grading, or maybe it is standards-based grading. I'm not an educator. Um, but we never got to that second part where I got to ask those in-depth questions. Instead, we sort of evolved through a process and it got driven aggressively by administration and we did the policy to back it up and we theoretically adopted it. But I still don't really know what's in, what we're actually doing. And so I do appreciate how difficult it is to change practice that's been in place for decades, okay? And it's what people have learned, it's how they they were taught to teach, et cetera. So I know there's going to be quite a bit of resistance. And if that happens and we've made the commitment to it, I want to see us go in whole hog and actually get behind it and do what we need to do, invest the money. Let's do the professional development. Let's do all the things it takes to make this work. But what I don't see is how this is balanced and prioritized against a lot of the other um, things that we are trying to accomplish simultaneously. And I think one of the concerns that I have is that we've taken on so many new aggressive ideas that you know we're overwhelming our teachers. Our teachers have been just just 
COVID just wrung everybody out, you know, and then on top of that, we're constantly innovating and coming up with new ideas. And they're not bad ideas necessarily. I just think maybe it's a little too much. So now making a huge investment with this, like I said, I'm frustrated. I don't really know what we're doing and I don't know whether to support this or not. Thanks. I guess what I could promise you, um, trust you, Raderman, is um, uh, Dr. Feldman has offered to do another engagement session with the board um, at the board's uh, you know, discretion, whenever you would like, uh, because it's absolutely important for you to have the information that you need to feel confident um, in this approach. And also to know that the this year is an opt-in. So the second cohort is opt-in. So it's only those teachers who want to take this on um, because they've learned from, watched the first cohort last year and have decided that they want to come along in this practice as well. Um, so we are not forcing any teacher against their will to engage in this work this year. This is another year of action research, expanding the circle, expanding the knowledge base, expanding the conversation, uh, sort of preparing the ground for a future shift in practice. But um, Joe, do you wanna say anything more about your engagement with the board or what you'd like to engage them around? Well, I certainly wanna make sure that everyone on the board understands the content. Um, and you know, having read the book, I think that's a lot of the content. And I think um, the process is particularly valuable um, where teachers are engaged actively in trying the practices with support and collecting quantitative and qualitative data that supports the benefits of the practices. So um, what this allows is the board and district to generate a body of evidence in its own context about the benefits to students across the demographic spectrum. Um, and it's, um, from the initial uh, responses from teachers, at least, um, and I don't know if that um, information has been shared around the positive responses. Um, and there was an extremely high number that wanted other, their colleagues to participate in this professional development. Uh, many, a uh, majority of whom said it was a more effective professional development than others that they've received within the district. And so I think the value of it to them in the ways that they're engaged and becoming active learners and supported throughout their learning process, um, as well as given choice as adult learners, um, I think speaks to the value of it actually impacting their practices. I don't know if there's I'm another- I'm out of time, so yeah. yes, thank you for the response. If, thank let me hear the rest of them and then we'll come back if I have more questions, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and we, we've had, I think, two sessions uh, with Dr. Feldman ourselves, and we, I thought it was, I think, pretty sure it's two. And we had the teachers come in and talk at, at a meeting as well about their experiences that they had, the first cohort. I have short memory. I only remember one. Um, Trustee Canova, you were up. <clears throat> yeah, I think for me, um, as our CBO has presented to us in recent meetings, um, this district has a very significant deficit. We're deficit spending. Signif you know, it's very significant. It's a very serious issue. And so the conversation here is not the merits of this particular uh, $120,000 expenditure by itself. Uh, we have to look at the big picture and sometimes um, certain things are not doable because of budgetary reasons. Uh, we tonight are gonna be discussing an interim superintendent. And I think a modest suggestion to my colleagues would be, I would like to have this set aside until that interim is on board and have that interim have a look at this and make some recommendations because we're deficit spending. And uh, you know, 120,000 for this and 200,000 for that it all adds up as our deficit shows. So um, I think it's reasonable to say, hit the pause button at least briefly enough to let our interim have a look at this and then make some suggestions to the board. Is there, is there any reason that we cannot set this aside for at least a meeting or two? The only thing that I would offer is that we have um, professional development plan for July 28th and July 29th with the new cohort. That's prior to the August 11th board meeting. 
And without that, those initial days, it would essentially um, make it extremely difficult for that cohort to get started because of the in-depth um, learning that they need uninterrupted during those two days. Just have to see how my colleagues, if they agree with me or not, but um, I just don't feel good about this expenditure right now when tonight we're talking about an interim that's gonna be coming on board. So I guess um, I'll, I'll take my two minutes. You can time me on this one. Uh, um, I, I really appreciated hearing from the teachers um, that had done this program, how excited they were, how much they um, quickly saw what it was providing to their students. I think that um, is, is very powerful. And I like that this program is an opt-in. So the first cohort of, of teachers were teachers that wanted to do this work. So they were are willing to take the time and effort um, beyond their normal day, in some cases, to do this work. And um, the second cohort is another group of teachers who want to do this. So um, I, I think it's it's such an improvement for our um, our staff. Uh, you know, a, a new way of looking at um, equity in terms of the grading, and and they want to do it, and I want to um, support that. Um, I think that. Um, to do it right. It sounds like we want to do something more in depth, more than just a self-paced class. This is great that the um, county offers this. And when we go forward, uh, rolling it out to more, we might want to take advantage of this um, type of program. But this contract has a lot of time. Those, those July dates are really to dive in for the second cohort and going forward, um, giving time to the teachers to really think about it and compare notes and try things and um, make a difference in their classroom. I just, I think that that is um, super powerful when it is um, teacher driven. So my question, uh, Mr. Stam is, can you, um, do you know off the top of your head, how many teachers participated in the first year and how many have signed up for the second cohort? I believe we have 40 for the second cohort and we're continuing with 20 from the first cohort. Yeah, that's great that we've got 60 teachers that want to do this at our secondary. Um, okay, um, I was going to take public comment. I just want to see uh, Trustee Ryan. Yeah, go ahead, and then we'll go out to public comment. Yeah, I, I mean, I appreciate, and I've raised the issue before that this board uh, has done a lot of deficit spending. Um, but since I've been on the board um, and beyond, and before that time, uh, the district it has real issues of equity that we need to address. And while it's great that the county is offering an online self-paced course that's open and free for anyone, that's very different than working as a cohort with your colleagues in, uh, in a facilitated way, in a way that you can collaborate together. Um, I've done uh, a lot of the things that are part of this on my own, so I'm familiar with the approach, um, but the, uh, the opportunity to be able to work um, with a leading expert in the field um, to be able to implement this successfully uh, and really drive equity work, I think, I think this is where we have to spend money. This is about students. A lot of what we spend our money on here is about the adults, but this, you know, in training the teachers, this is really helping our students, and that's what we have to prioritize where we spend our money. So, um, I am hoping we can move forward on this. Okay, thank you. So um, we've got one member of the public who wish to speak, Amber Watt. We'll give you a couple minutes there, and then we'll continue our discussion. Um, hi, everyone. Thought last week would be the last time, but um, so, anyways, um, I chose to sign up for the online. I'm curious um, if that can meet our needs. As a district, I too am worried about the amount of money that's spent on and consultants and specific um, things. I think um, Trustee Ryan is correct in terms of it's important to be able to have that cadre and that in-person connection, but I feel like that's also something that could probably be built if we're really looking to move towards capacity building with this program. Could there be some type of hybrid where we're doing the online training and then we're able to, there's the capacity within the district to meet. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to 
do the free training to see how this works as a teacher and if it's something that we could blend moving forward um, as a district. And, um, and then I kind of, the money part is there's units tied to doing it with the county. So you can actually get two credits through UOP. And so that might be a way to invest in our members or teachers too, because that helps them move across and um, you know build units towards their salary scale as well as continuing to build um, their education. So um, I wasn't included in that because I started as an elementary teacher, my placement, and now I'm moving into secondary. And that's something I did struggle with when I shifted, like the grading was challenging for me. I saw kids not being able to, or being disheartened to even try things or challenge things because they had a zero or an F. And so I do totally hear the equity conversation. And so I'm very interested. I'm gonna take the approach of doing it online with the county to see what the challenge is. And I look forward to, um, you know, talking with those teachers that are going through the cadre or whatever is chosen tonight. But I'm going to put myself through that to see if that works as a teacher. Okay, thank you. And we also have um, somebody on the Zoom Zoom who wants to comment. So I forgot to do my little my little note about civility um, before people commented. But the public should note that. Um, that's not the right one. I want to remind the public that the board has a policy on civility. Policy 1310.1 on civility states, this policy promotes mutual respect, civility, and orderly conduct <clears throat> among district employees, parents, and the public. This policy is not intended to deprive any person of his or her right to freedom of expression, but only to maintain to the extent possible and reasonable a safe harassment-free workplace for our students and staff in the interest of presenting district employees as positive role models to the children of this district, as well as the community, Santa Clara Unified encourages positive communication and discourages volatile, hostile, or aggressive actions. This, the district seeks the public's cooperation with this endeavor. So if you are out on the live stream, you'll need to join the um, Zoom in order to make a public statement if you um, want to comment. Um, if you're on the Zoom, now is the time to raise your hand if you'd like to speak on this topic. So I will pass it over to Michelle to handle public comment. Thank you, President Muirhead. And for the members of the public that would like to speak, please raise your hand in the Zoom webinar. Public speakers will be called upon in the order that the hands were raised. There will be a two minute timer on the screen, similar to the one we have in the boardroom to help you to moderate your comments. In order to ensure equitable speaking time, we will have to move on to the next comment after two minutes. Our first speaker is Kristen Gonzalez, and you should be prompted to unmute. Please unmute and begin your comment. Good evening, friends, board members, uh, President Muirhead. I'm calling to speak on behalf of the grading for equity. I, can I get a head nod? Because I can you hear me? Okay, just check it. It looked okay. Um, so with all due respect to our, our brilliant educators in the district, both administrators, teachers, and other staff, um, we don't have the capacity to do this work and also simultaneously do the work of, of teaching our children and taking care of our children every day. Equity work is increasingly important, and we know that, and I see us as a world leading district. That's what I think we aspire to be, to be in front of other people, to be um, pushing these things forward. And it's not a new concept, but we jumping on board on grading for equity at this sort of beginning wave will keep us at the forefront of education and educating our children. And so I, I appreciate and also signed up for the county class so I could see what the county had to offer. Um, but I have no doubt and no reservation about moving this work forward as these teachers begin to navigate and sort of unlearn and learn a new way of grading and assessing our students and providing meaningful feedback and aligning our assessments to the grades in a more and most appropriate way 
We are unlearning the way that we were all taught in our in our um, credentialing classes. We are our parents are are going to be unlearning how they were graded and assessed. It is a huge task and undertaking, and we cannot do it on our own. Despite our brilliant educators, we just have too much on our plates, and we need the support and guidance. And so, I urge you to move this forward. Thank you. President, you're you're ahead, that was our last offer. comment. Yeah, I was following uh, Ms. Gonzalez until the very her, her very last sentence. Was that clear to you? Does she want to move this forward or not? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I thought she didn't want to, but she. No, I do. I I'm still. I can still unmute. And yes, I urge <laughs> you to move it forward, please. Okay. Thank you. Not Trustee Muirhead, I just yes. wanted to offer my commitment uh, to work with uh, Kristen and Amber and the county to thoroughly investigate this offering and to ensure that this become part of our strategy, an integrated strategy, because I do appreciate the cost concerns of the board. And I do not offer this lightly or frivolously. I do believe that the return on investment is worth the cost. Okay, thank you. So uh, more board comment then, um, Trustee Ratterman and Trustee Gonzalez. Yeah, so, you know, we've heard from one of our principals, which is very valuable. Thank you so much for calling in because that was huge to me. Um, the piece that's bothering me the most, I think, is that that's sort of the way this has been put together. Um, and I don't know that that's Mr. Feldman or Mr. Feldman's company's concern. I think it has, it may be affecting him, but it has to do with how we have put this forward. And I think that we need to, we need to spend a little effort on designing how we do our forward planning. We've got a, a long-term strategic plan, but a lot of the elements in that plan aren't things that have been, have been clear um, is exactly what they mean. We're investing about 2000 with, with the two, the 20, if you open it to 60 people, we're investing about $2,000 per teacher and or as it sounds like a lot i'm i'm okay with that if we're getting you know really getting the bang for the buck i appreciate the prestige of having mr feldman who is absolutely almost the only authority on the the type of grading that's referred to specifically as equity grading um but there are some competing standards based so um you know, we've already invested a year in this. Uh, I'm, and it looks like a delay will present some real challenges. Um, I would love to hear more from, I, it's unfortunate that this is occurring during the, the break. I would like to hear more from our teachers to see what they, how they feel about it, but it is an opt-in program. So, uh, and we do apparently have 40 people that want additional people that want to opt in. So I may reluctantly support this is uh, uh, trustee Ryan said it is something that's in front of the students. And to me, I'm more like, if I'm gonna be um, extravagant, I'm gonna be extravagant on the, on the student side um, of things. Uh, but, but we need to, as a board, we need to really get a better, clearer understanding of what we're doing, where we're going. And unfortunately we're in a transition period right now. So that's particularly difficult. So thanks. Okay, thank you. Trustee Gonzalez and then Trustee Fairchild. Well, I guess we're uh taking a little time take, taking a little bit of time on this, and I think we're we're uh we're uh I won't say that we're getting to the weeds of things, but what I would say is that we're gonna we're gonna be equity champions. It starts here. And and if we don't we don't lead in that manner, then I'm not sure where uh, where we're heading. I think that the results that we've gotten in the past, and staff is asking for this to move forward to try to change some of the things that, that we're seeing. I think it's important. I think that um, I understand that this is programs coming up. I know we, we've been doing this for about nine months or so. So I don't know if, if this class was offered, you know, back then. But we're we're on we're on track to do something. The wheels of the bus are not going to stop because we're looking for an interim. We still got to move forward with what we're doing as far as the programs and things that we got to do for our students. I have no doubt that staff ha has been looking at things that the county has offered. I know that the county and us have done a lot of things together 
and I think it was I data a few years ago that got a golden belt. And we, I think it was us and Franklin McKinley and the districts that were at the bleeding edge of that. So I have no doubt that we're looking at different aspects of, of how we, we move forward together. And the county has been at the forefront of doing that. And they're, it looks like they're leading in this as, as well. But we can't stop what we need to do because of where we're at. We need to do the best we can for our students. And I think obviously we've been deficit spending in the past. This is not a large amount. And nobody likes consultants. We understand that that's more expensive. But um, as we move forward, I think staff is looking at how to build capacity. I think that's the one thing that, that uh, we've heard in the past as well. We need to build capacity and we're working on that. But as we do that, you know, I, I think it's important for us to, to definitely move forward. And I think uh, staff has things outlined to, uh, to do some of the training and that's where we're at today. So hopefully we can get this passed. Thank you. Okay, Trustee Fairchild and Trustee Canova. Thank you, President Muirhead. Um, I do believe we need to be equity champions. My point is we don't have to pay the most and we don't need to look for status. There are many people that are training on this. And I, I am concerned when we have people in our own county that, and even our own county office of ed offering things, if they're offering this class, then I'm sure they have trainers. And I'm sure this is gonna pass tonight, but I would really like our staff to be more thoughtful. We don't have to award our consultants to the highest bidder. We're not even getting Joe Feldman. We're getting someone he pays to do it. And we're paying them thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for mostly online. It's not one, I think it's two in person. Um, and we last time couldn't even keep the PowerPoint, I believe. So I, I, I'm, I just want us to be a little more thoughtful. We don't have to go out to the highest bidder. It's hard for me, and this is part of the problem with having so many connections in the community and in the school district, when I hear expensive that, expenses that are also directly benefiting children, being told, staff being told we can't afford it. And yet in the district office and here, we always go for the highest bidder. Well, and, and we everything, oh no, we can't wait. We can't ever wait and it has to be approved tonight. And if we don't, we'll lose our spot. We hear this over and over and over again. And I and I get that, but I this is taxpayer money and we need to be a little more thoughtful in how we're spending our um, consultant money. These are businesses. And if we're willing to pay them $10,000, thousands of dollars an hour, th they'll take it. Okay, Trustee Canova. Yep. I think it's obvious from the comments from my colleagues that this will pass tonight. But tonight, my vote will be no because we need to, and it has nothing to do with the merits of this. This is a wonderful thing. I agree with everyone. Albert, I agree with you completely. But the bus stops when the money runs out. The bus stops when we run into a recession. You've been there. You've been part of that. You remember the recession and the cuts we had. Wonderful, beautiful programs were shut down. When the money runs out, the bus stops. And so I'm gonna to vote tonight because this board needs to start learning how to say no. We talk about all the consultants, all the money we're spending. We're the ones that have approved all that. We're the ones who have said yes, 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 over and over and over again. We hold the purse strings. It's our job to question these things. And it's also our job to once in a while vote no. That's why we're here. So it's not about the merit of what's in front of us. I'm voting no just to introduce a word into the room. We can say no. Excuse me, I'm wondering if I can just speak a little bit to the cost and maybe give some helpful ways for bo the board to think about this as other districts, as you can imagine, also want to uphold their fiduciary duty. Um, but again, I, I wasn't yeah. asked a question, but I'm just wondering if it would be helpful. I, I would be interested in hearing that. I don't so, need to hear, sorry, I don't need to hear from someone who's trying to us to get us to pay him money and explaining why we need to pay him so much money. So that's one perspective. And Jody has said and she I, I would like to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh Dr. Feldman, why don't you go ahead and explain? 
Uh, well, first of all, I'm just Mr. My wife, who is a doctor, wouldn't want me accepting being called a doctor. Um, but there's a couple, I, I would just encourage the district to actually look through the other end of the tel telescope. So part of what this does is it is shown to reduce D and F rates of students. And as you know, and you can speak to your business department about this, every F is a cost to the district. And when the Fs add up either from dropouts or from building remedial courses, it costs the district's money, tens of thousands of dollars every time a remedial course is constructed. And when you reduce D and F rates, you actually save money on the district from the district's um, accounts. The other thing to think about is that it's when you look at the number of hours that are received by teachers and administrators in this, if we exclude the presentations with caregivers and families that help bring them up to speed so, you, so they are better informed and you exclude lots of other correspondence with districts and coordination with district, it costs about $50 per hour for every teacher, which is not free, but it is a different kind of way to think about how the district is spending its money, both on the return on investment in saving money around fewer DNF rates. The final thing I'll say is that from your teachers who did this, 40% said that by being in this professional development, it made them more likely to want to stay in the district. And you can also speak to your business department about the costs around retaining teachers and hiring new ones. And what many districts have found is that this actually increases retention of teachers, which saves the districts also money. So I think it's actually a cost saving measure as well as a cost spending measure. So, and again, I can't speak to the quality of the online course that's free, um, but I can just tell you that districts are thinking about this with a couple additional lenses that may resonate or not with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, was there anyone else? Uh, Trustee Ryan. So, so Jim, uh, you know, I'm I've actually said no quite a bit in the last couple of months to a board that said yes to a lot of things. It's about spending money. So you're not introducing the word no. I, I've been saying it quite a bit. But here's an area where I think we need to spend money. And I, I think back to 10 years ago when I was, or 11 years ago when I was teaching in Oak Grove, and the district made a commitment because of its long, its um, high level of long-term English language learners, that it made a commitment to have every single middle school teacher go through an intensive program on teaching early English language learners. It was an enormous commitment of money, but it was done for the benefit of students. Um, and I, I look at this as the same way. I think it's very telling that the teachers who are in it want to continue with it, and more teachers want to sign up to be in the next cohort of it. I also think there's lots of ways to learn. This, this online course this summer, it's a great introduction to the topic. Um, and maybe you can form some small groups around of, of other teachers who want to join in because it's free. Um, but it's a very different experience than, than the facilitated workshop that we're getting. Um, so uh, I've said no quite a bit, but this is something I'm going to say yes to. Okay, so um, I think everyone's had a chance, a couple of chances. Um, if we're ready to take a vote, I need a motion to approve. Actually, I don't have a motion. I move to approve, Ryan. Second, Gonzalez. Okay, so we have a motion from Trustee Ryan and a second from Trustee Gonzalez to approve the contract um, with Crescendo Education Group. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I need a few hands because I can't count. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. All those in uh, opposed, say no. Okay, so that passes five to two. Um, okay. I, I do want to make one comment if I can. Uh, one quick comment? And then yeah, we'll one quick on. comment. I voted yes. I have faith in our administration to make sure that we get the maximum. And I heard a personal commitment from Dr. Stam. Um, and that was the thing that actually pushed me over. So my hope is that, you know, and I want to see the board brought up to speed. I, I, do not like voting on things that I'm not sure I fully understand. So, and and I like to ask Mr. Stam also that um, when it makes sense to bring this back 
to us like you did with the teachers last time, it would be great to hear again um, from our teachers about um, how it went and what they got out of it. And it also sounds like if there's a way to scale it back a bit for the following year, um, we should be looking at that um, as we go through this year, um, if where there's um, changes that we could make to the contract for the following year so it's not quite as expensive. Uh, question, yes. Uh, so you mentioned we we're having professional development days for this program. Are we, is that, will the teachers be back or will we be paying the teachers to come in for those professional development days? So is that an additional cost, those 60 teachers for two days? Yes, that is an additional cost. And I think it's just the 40, right? It's just the second cohort. The, um, yeah, I mean, that that's typical practice, though, when it's beyond the contract year. So I just... No, uh, I get that. But that's something that should have been included in this that we're that cost. Can we get a, you to figure that out and let us know the additional cost, please? Sure, I'll, I'll figure out the cost for the entire... Yeah, the entire program for the entire year. We're happy to do that. And I just want to assure Trustee Radaman, you have my commitment uh, and to the entire board to have a con cost conscious approach to this work. Thank you. That makes me feel better. And by the way, I'm not sure where the $50 came up with. That means 40 hours worth of uh, okay. work. Okay, let's, let's move on um, to our next item. Okay. Um, so the next item is item C, public comment on closed session agenda agendas items. So this is a chance to speak on one of our closed session items. Um, and I have one speaker in the room. And if you are out on the Zoom and you wish to speak, now would be the time to raise your hand on one of the closed session items. And I'll just list them real quick so you know. Um, D.1, uh, public employee appointment, uh, program specialist with special ed, item D.2, another program specialist for special ed, item D.3, public employee appointment of the interim superintendent, and item D.4, public employee appointment of superintendent. Okay, um, Margie Iwasaki is first. On, yes. Good evening, President Muirhead and the school board trustees. As you know, my name is Margie Iwasaki and I'm the vice president of UTSC. I'm speaking tonight to publicly offer the district our support in this challenging time. Leadership change can be unsettling, but we believe we have the opportunity before us not only to recommit to collaboration, but to move forward in true partnership. Partnership regarding decisions affecting our students, planning curricula, and creating a cycle of data analysis, all of which benefit student growth. With the hiring of new leadership, whether as an interim or permanent leader, you have the opportunity to affect positive change in our district. This necessary change is not only beneficial to our partners, it's necessary for our students. Years and years of edu educational research support this, and we know that you support this goal. So as you move into deliberations regarding leadership change, we ask that you keep three leadership qualities in mind. One, we need a leader who can help us reestablish trust and rebuild relationships. Two, we need someone who will commit to a shared decision model, decision making model, and who values labor management partnerships where all stakeholders are heard, valued, and supported. Finally, we need a good communicator. To our teachers and our community watching this evening, we'd like to state that UTSC is optimistic with the upcoming change. We'll take what we have learned in the recent past and use it to improve our systems. To the school board, we place our trust in you that you will make the best possible choice. I wish each and every one of you a restful month of July. I know the last two years have been hard on all of you as well. Relax, rest, rejuvenate, enjoy your time off. What is this time off thing you talk about? Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry. We uh, have a public uh, speaker on the Zoom, so I'll turn that over to Michelle. Yes, we do. Our first speaker is Kristen Gonzalez. You should be prompted to unmute. Please unmute and begin your comment. Thank you. 
Uh, I just wanted to um, ask that the board do some deep self-reflection about what it is that you guys want. I think that in our last leadership change, you had an idea about you what you wanted. And then I think maybe you lost that along the way. And so I wanna be sure that, um, that you're thinking about what it is that you stand for, for our district and our students, so that you can be clear and committed to that as we look for a new person to lead us. Um, I also think that you own some responsibility for this situation that we're in. And I'd like you to take some time to reflect on that as well. This is gonna be a hard transition for a lot of us. And we've put a lot of good work in over the last three years. And I hope that we keep a lot of those things, particularly Vision 2035 that outlines a good plan. And I know that during the pandemic, it was hard to focus on that. And there were many comments about forget about it for now. And that's fine to take that. But as we try to shift back into a more normal, somewhat normal uh, way of life and education, that we keep that document as our guiding North Star for all that we do. There was a lot of good stuff, a lot of community input, was put into that both from staff, from students, from parents, from business members. Some of you were there to watch that work happen. And I hope that we keep that as we move forward. Thank you. And that was the last hand that was raised in the Zoom webinar. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so the board is going into closed session now. I'll just repeat them again. We'll be talking about D.1, uh, public employee appointment of a program specialist, special education. D.2, public employee appointment of another program specialist with special education. D.3, public employee appointment of the interim superintendent. D.4, public employee appointment of the superintendent. And um, we will be coming back to open session. We do have a couple more things um, in open session after closed session. So we will be back. Um, to do those after. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back. Santa Clara Unified, we're back from closed session. So our report out from closed session is that item D1, we received information. Item D2, we received information. Item D3, the board received information and discussed. And D4, the board did not discuss. Okay, next item, F.1, uh, F is our consent. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Rotterman. Second, Gonzalez. <coughs> okay, we have a motion from Trustee Rotterman. Second from Trustee Gonzalez. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes seven to zero. Um, next item is uh, G.1, ratification of the appointment of the program specialist, special education. Dr. Gonzalez. Good evening, board members. It's my pleasure to introduce a Manchu, Manjusha Carvey as a special education program specialist. Uh, Manchu received her bachelor's degree in life science and her master's degree in life science from the University of Bombay, India. Manju started her career in Santa Clara Unified School District uh, on April 2008 as a substitute teacher. And in August of 2008, she was hired as a special education teacher at Peterson Middle School. She taught at Peterson Middle School from 2008 to 2018. In June of 2018, she was selected as a special education TOSA. Some of Manju's professional and work experiences include uh, teaching math, uh, epic special ed credential classes for the Santa Clara Unified School District cohort. She was an induction and PSP coach working with new and intern special education teachers from elementary, middle, and high school. As a TOSA, she supported the safety care training by subbing in kinder post-secondary classes. She also worked with the new teachers planning and coordinating professional development sessions. She led the private school assessment team, work with the vocational team to understand the processes and inventories and supported the review of the vocational handbook. She also attended the F3 lawyer training, work with special ed leadership team to plan and support special education staff. Motion to approve the appointment, Rotterman. Okay. We have a motion from Trustee Rotterman, second by Trustee Gonzalez. Any comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? So that passes seven to zero. Thank you. Okay, G.2. Great. It's my uh, pleasure to introduce Catherine uh, Demery. Catherine received her bachelor's degree in anthropology with a minor in psychology from UC Santa Cruz. She received her master's degree in special education from Notre Dame de Namur University in Belmont. Catherine is coming to Santa Clara Unified School District from San Jose Unified School District, where she has been a program specialist for the last four years. Prior to her current role, she has been a behavior intervention specialist, special education teacher, and a research specialist. As a program specialist in San Jose Unified, some of her responsibilities included uh, supporting, coordinating, and consulting with all personnel assigned to special education programs. She participated in staff development and conferred with site administrators to ensure compliance in these programs. She also supported families, students, and staff in developing appropriate special education programs. She managed students placed in private schools and coordinated with other district staff to ensure compliance procedures and community support. Motion to approve the appointment. Otterman. Second, Gonzalez. Okay, we have a motion from Trustee Ratterman. Second from Trustee Gonzalez. All those, any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes seven to zero. Thank you and congratulations to our new, our new uh, employee. I move to adjourn. Second. Rotterman. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn from Trustee Ryan, a second from Trustee Fairchild. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 So we are adjourned at 1022. Oh, and we have um, another special meeting on. Oh, we don't know yet. 